How do I know this is recording? Uh, no? There we go. There it is. What's up, everybody? Welcome. Uh, this is a test of the Canon R6 with the 16 f2.8 STM lens for vlogging. Uh, it's the official Eric Jennings dog walking test. It's a torture test because not only do I walk like a caveman with no feet and just stumps for legs, but also my dog yanks at me a lot. So we're going to try two things. Um, before we get into it, i got to set it up. Right now we are with IBIS on, but digital IS not on. Um, and I am in the standard profile shooting 4K 23.98 frames a second. So that's what we got going on. Um, I'll tell you about why this lens is interesting uh, in a second for vlogging, but we'll see how it is. Uh, let's get the dog. Okay, so I am on a little Gorillapod knockoff thing right now on 16 millimeters with the IBIS on, so the Gorillapod might be helping with a little bit of stabilization. I'm not holding it by hand. I want to let you guys know that as I walk and talk here with my dog. Um, I never really answered the question as to why I canceled my OM-1 pre-order. And, um, well, this was kind of it in so many ways. So, this camera, the Canon R6, kind of offered everything that I needed or wanted in a camera for about the same price point as they were selling the OM-1 for. Uh, it has stabilization, it has a flip screen, it's weather sealed, probably not to the same level. Um, it's a full frame sensor, but they also had the option to keep things small and lightweight, and the 16 2.8 was the answer to that. In fact, I think this right here is about the same as like the 12 F2 on top of the OM-1, it's pretty darn close. And so I wanted to see how that was. And that's why I canceled my pre-order because I thought to myself, for some of the things I'm doing with the kids and the sports, this R6 might be a little bit better better go. Um, so I ended up canceling OM-1 and I was waiting to kind of, I was trying a couple things. I almost went back to the S5, um, almost bought the X-T4, and then this R6 kind of came out of nowhere and I was like, yeah, this is the one. If I'm gonna spend that kind of money, then that's what I need to do. Uh, it's dog poopy time. So let me switch over real quick to the digital IS and try that, because that was just a little bit of non-digital IS stabilization. Hold on. All right, we are now on the digital mode plus IBIS. Not digital enhanced, there is another level of this. I'll put that on in a second. So it should be a little bit more cropped in, um, a little bit more smooth. I feel like this is probably the sweet spot with this lens if I'm using this setup. So I think it's plenty plenty good like this. Hopefully it's not warping or jittering. There was a firmware update, and I think this camera has it installed. I'm in firmware 1.5. That took care of a lot of the warpy, jelloy stuff that happens with this lens and this camera. I think you've seen on Camera Conspiracies, he kind of complained about it. Um, and so I think that took care of that. So back to the OM-1 a little bit. Talk more about that. Um, I talked to you guys about the zero sum game, the price, you know, the pricing game, about investing in systems where you want to be and size and weight and lens options and third-party options and price point and the OM-1 just started tiptoeing and tap dancing on that well if you're gonna spend 2300 bucks you should consider other options out there um, the GH6 does the same thing now for some people that are into birds and like wildlife and I think the OM-1 it makes a lot of sense if you're into like super special um, movie making anamorphic stuff the GH6 makes a lot of sense I think that's what you're finding out. These cameras, these Micro Four Thirds cameras, are either gonna be consumer cameras, small and portable, or they're gonna end up being specialty cameras. And so I think ultimately I decided the R6, if this works out for me, might be the best all around package if this 1628 works um, as I go on some of these vacations. So uh, let me switch over to the enhanced IS mode real quick and we'll try that out. Okay, we are now in enhanced IS mode. Um, Again, this is a 1628. This thing's gotta be cropped into about a 24, 25, 26 millimeter equivalent focal length right now. Um, holding on this gorilla pod, walking down the street. I don't know. By the way, I'm using like a total bougie third party microphone. If it's not doing good with wind noise cancellation, I apologize. I didn't have the road upstairs and didn't feel like going to get it. But this is what digital um, enhanced IS plus IBIS looks like. Uh, yeah. Look better? Is it necessary? What's your thoughts? By the way, I'm shooting at 1 200th of a shutter speed f2.8. ISO is at 100 using the uh, shutter speed to control the exposure. Here's autofocus, by the way. It's tracking the eye. I'll tell you one thing right now. 
the autofocus tracking this thing is absolutely bonkers. It's really good, really, really good. Um, so yeah, let me review the footage and I'll come back to you guys at the end of this and, and share my thoughts. All right, so I just had a chance to watch the video, the feed, the footage I'm, I'm editing over here. And I would say for a walking video, the best mode to me looked like the IBIS Plus digital on with this lens. And, and it's um, because you get a little bit of wobble gone that's present in the IBIS only. And because this is a 16 millimeter lens, you have enough clearance to still not look like you're just zoomed in on your face. I think the enhanced IS mode is a little bit too tight and maybe <clears throat> not necessary. So I would say, yeah, digital on, just on, not enhanced, plus IBIS with this 16-2.8 is pretty good. Um, and I don't know, just I'm looking in, this is my, my office, I'm looking at myself here. This lens looks pretty clean. Uh, I got to work on the colors a little bit. I thought the outdoor colors were okay. I think they're much better right now. But um, yeah, I'll keep doing some more testing. But I'd say this camera for vlogging is plus this lens is is a is a win. Probably one of the best that I've had. So if I go out on these little landscape adventures or vacations, this would look really really good. The only thing, the only question is, is do you want to get to something like a fourteen to thirty five? or 15 to 35, what are the two lenses? They have an F4 and they have an uh, F2.8 lens. Those are big and really heavy and expensive. This keeps it super lightweight and portable and makes it pretty manageable. Um, meaning, do you want the zoom or don't you want the zoom? Uh, to kind of be a one and done type lens, if you will, for, for landscape type stuff. Um, although I guess you would probably need a 24 to 70 or a 70 to 200. Anyways, yeah, zoom lens versus that. You get my point. I'm sorry, I'm rambling. All right, uh, appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.